Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. This week I wanna talk about emotional manipulators and I wanna give you some phrases that an emotional manipulator will use. We're doing a little series on here of different types of abusive people and what they will typically say because when I've done these videos over the years, people definitely want real specifics on what is this person going to say to me to try to manipulate me, to try to gaslight me, to try to make me feel guilty, shame me, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I love this because manipulation is a really tough one. And if you've never really learned about this information and you have poor boundaries yourself, it's going to be hard for you sometimes to be able to spot when someone is manipulating you. So let's get into this. Manipulation, the reason for manipulation, it kind of varies depending on the abuser or the manipulator, but what it all, what any abuser or manipulator has in common is they're seeking control. Some people really thrive on feeling dominant over another person or they want to get what they want out of you. So they need something from you. And in order to get what they want, they're going to use manipulative tactics in order to have you conform and do something that maybe you don't wanna do or maybe you normally wouldn't do. And the goal is to just basically get this person to get what they want, right? Which is control. When someone craves that kind of like dominance or that control over another person, what it does is it really just makes them feel good about themselves. It means that someone's actually listening to them. It means that someone's actually giving them attention. And for someone who's narcissistic, an abuser, um, someone who's just really toxic and unhealthy, they thrive on those things. Because again, remember when you're dealing with toxic and unhealthy people, you're dealing with someone who's severely insecure, has a lot of low self-esteem. It may not always appear that way, but that is the underlining message in all abusers. So it makes them feel important. It makes them feel filled up inside because someone is not only listening to them, but actually doing what they want, hence the control. So why do people struggle with control in that way that they then become manipulative themselves? One of the first things is going to be, and then we're gonna get into the phrases, is a lot of people that seek control actually suffer from anxiety. If growing up they were raised in environments where they felt very out of control, it is going to spark anxiety as they become adults. When you have felt out of control throughout the course of your life, or you haven't learned how to fill yourself up, you are going to want to control things as an adult, or you're going to want people or things outside of you to fill you up because you didn't learn how to do that. In order to have self-esteem, no matter how much self-esteem you have, whether it's a little or a lot, you learned that skill. You learned on some levels how to fill yourself up. You learned that you didn't need to put someone else down in order to feel good about yourself. Like that's a skill that you were taught. So if you weren't taught that skill and you don't know how to really even do it for yourself, you're going to need, it's like air, you're going to need something to make you feel good inside. Hence why people are addicted to drugs, addicted to eating, addicted to working, narcissistic, etc. Nine times out of 10, someone who's abusive or narcissistic will not even know that they were raised in dysfunction. I know many people who are very unaware to what happened to them throughout the course of their childhood and their life that causes them to be the way they are today. So people that are not introspective at all, not curious or even inquisitive about why am I this way, those are the people that can't self-reflect. Those are the people that tend to be narcissistic. Those are also the people that are so far gone down the rabbit hole that either they don't even see the dysfunction or they can't even face the dysfunction. So a manipulator, most of the time is not going to even be able to know that they are manipulating. They're not going to even be aware that they're trying to dominate another person, that they're trying to control the situation. Now, if you love control and you like to dominate other people, really what that means is your ego is at the forefront and your ego believes that it is right. It believes that it knows everything. It believes that it is the smartest person in the room. It cannot take criticism. It cannot take feedback. It cannot take other people chiming in. That is why most manipulators, most narcissists are coming from that space, that type of personality, that type of character, because they can't take feedback. They need the control. They need to get what they want, the way they want it, when they want it. So it's a very childlike mentality, which I've said in a multitude of videos. And so what I want you to do is understand 
not only just phrases that someone will say, but I want you to understand why someone is even saying this to begin with. What are they trying to get out of, what are they trying to get out of saying these things to me? Now, all manipulators, since really what they're doing is seeking control, they're going to examine the person in front of them and learn about this person to see what tactics should I use in order to get this person to give me what they want, in order for them to conform. So there's always gonna be three things that a manipulator is going to kind of examine you and see which one would work best with you. Do you respond best to fear? Do you respond best to guilt? Or do you respond best to shame? So remember, with manipulation too, it's not just one sentence that's said. What happens is a manipulator is grooming you. So there's going to be gaslighting that's done. There's going to be a multitude of things that are said. It's not just gonna be one phrase and you'll be able to spot it. It's going to be a multitude of like these little things that are going to be said in order for you to feel fear, to feel guilt, or to feel shame. Or feel shame, excuse me. So if a manipulator is looking to use guilt on you, the things that they're going to say are going to be things like, this always happens to me, they hurt me so badly and I was just trying to help that person. So they're going to make themselves feel like a victim to you. They're gonna say things like, why do you always do this? You always like wanna bring this up and we go around and around and it really upsets me. I never thought you would never be there for me and I'm asking you for a favor and you're saying no and that's not the kind of friend that you are. You're being selfish. How could you not want to do this right now? So when they start to kind of like make you feel bad for the boundaries that you put in place or when they're making themselves out to be the victim, so you'll feel bad for them, feel guilty that they're feeling the way that they are, that they're suffering in any way, now they've hooked you. And now all it takes now, since you've been hooked, is just a little bit more of those tactics, a little bit more of those stories, a little bit more of those phrases said in different ways in order to really kind of just like reel you in and get you to do what they want you to do, which is a multitude of things. It could be give them something. It could be look at them in a certain way. It could be just let your boundaries down and just let me do what I want to do. When a narcissist or a manipulator uses fear in their phrases in order to kind of control you, what they've learned about you is that you are very much codependent on them, that you are very much reliant on having this person in their life. So they know where they rank in your life and just how valuable or how heavy that relationship is to you. So it means a lot to you and it means not that it means a lot and that that's a bad thing, but that it means so much to you that this person, this abuser, this narcissist, this manipulator has almost become your lifeline. And when that happens, that means that you are now not able to do and give the, give yourself the stuff that you need to give yourself. That means there's no self-parenting going on. That means there's you don't know how to love yourself. That means that you're severely codependent, that you're looking for these outside people in order to fill you up. Like I've always said, the 80-20 rule, you're looking for this person or a multitude of people to give you 80% of what you need every day in order to fill yourself up. And they know this. And so when the person knows, okay, I know I'm 80% to this person. I know that this person is not giving themselves the stuff that they need to give themselves because they're always looking for me to do it. They need that validation from me that, that, that now I can abuse them because I have them hooked. I know where their weakness is. So if it's fear that you have, fear of losing this person, fear of this person looking at you in a different way, fear of other people looking at you in a different way. If those are going to be kind of like your big wounds, then the phrases that they're going to say are going to look a little bit different. And so you wanna learn or you wanna try to understand what is this person saying? Are they using fear? Are they using guilt? Or are they using shame on me? So if they're using fear right off the bat, there's going to be a lot of threatening going on. There's going to be a lot of, well, if you don't do this, then I can't do that. There's going to be a lot of tit for tat because they're going to believe that you really need them and that you need them to do this or to give you this or to be there for you. And so because of that, the threatening is really going to play a big role in the phrases that this person will say to you. 
Remember, it's always gonna be a multitude of phrases. It's not just one. So along with the threatening, it's also going to be a little bit of picking at kind of like your self-esteem or your ability to do something. So passive aggressive comments might start to play in at this point. You might start to hear little jabs being said. And if you just follow your intuition, if you just listen to what people are saying to you, you'll be able to spot whether or not that was passive aggressive or whether or not, not that it was even genuine, just if it was hurtful, rather than always absorbing everything that everyone says and just being very unaware and very unconscious to not being mindful to what people are actually saying to you. When you start to slow down and you know like, hey, I really think this person is narcissistic. I really think this person is not the healthiest. And if you start to slow down and start to listen to what these people are saying to you, you will very easily be able to start hearing the fear, the guilt, the shame, the manipulation, the narcissism, the passive aggressive comments, because like I've always said, an abuser is not going to do a multitude of different things. They're not going to go from like silent treatment to passive aggressive. They will because they're always going to have a couple of tactics that they like to use on you. So they might give the silent treatment with just you and not your sister, or they might be passive aggressive with your brother, but your mom can, you know, just be very snarky and throw jabs very blatantly at you and not be too passive aggressive with it or just make you feel guilty whenever you don't do what it is that she wants you to do or whatever that looks like. So you have to really understand the person in front of you and what they like to do and what they like to say to you to get you to try to control you essentially. Now, if they're coming from shame, then what they're going to do is they're going to focus on an area within yourself that you feel insecure about. So if it's your weight, if it's your sensitivity, it's going to be an area where in the past when they've kind of like shined a light on this and tried to like poke you in this area, you reacted. You reacted emotionally, you went, you know, a little too crazy where maybe you did become a little erratic because you were so upset by what it is that they said to you, whether it was passive or aggressive or not, it was the area or the wound inside of you that they picked at and they know that that wound's there, that they're going to continue to pick at again. Sometimes they're gonna be blatant and they're just gonna hit you with it and it's gonna be relentless and it's gonna cut you at your knees and it's gonna hurt you. And other times it's gonna be a little bit more subtle, but it's still shame. So in the moments when you feel weak, insecure, vulnerable, those are going to be the times that this person is going to see and going to shame you for it. Now, if you're unaware of this, you're going to feel like you're the problem. You're going to feel like something's wrong with you. And that's why this person is saying this. So it's so, so important. And I know right off the bat, an example was a time I went to someone and I said, you know, I think I wanna go see a therapist. I've never done that before. And I really think it could actually possibly help me. And the person completely shamed me. They told me I need to learn how to fix my own problems. They told me that I just need to work out. They told me, not that it was silly, but they were making me feel like it was, it wasn't, I was unhealthy because I was trying to go and get healthy and be better. So there was shame right there. And because that person looked at going to a therapist as a sign of weakness, when in reality, that person probably was the person that needed it the most, but that's just, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, so what you wanna do is, you want to try to understand is this person putting me down is that like kind of the underlining message they might blatantly do it or they might do it in subtle ways are they comparing me to other people are they trying to keep up with the Jones joneses are they do they know that i'm really sensitive about my weight or this area of my life and are they making me feel bad about that so the more someone tries to pick at you in those areas by focusing on them and making you feel bad for not being able to lose the weight yet or you know for needing help and trying to get it for watching self-development videos and they think it's a bunch of you know cuckoo stuff or whatever as long as you're happy that person should be happy for you but someone who's toxic and unhealthy someone who's narcissistic they can't do that they don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to be healthy. They want you to stay where you are, if not come down a little bit, because if you're down, I can control you.
So I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to click any of the links down below if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me and I link all of my courses, eBooks, podcasts, things like that, social media down below as well. And I will see you next week.